Hey everybody, this is John Schwabus from policyviz.com. There were some questions about the formulas I used in the previous tutorial to redesign or remake this New York Times graph in Excel. So I thought instead of just writing a whole bunch, I'd just do a quick video. So here's the graph. If you haven't seen it, check out the previous video uh, in uh, on my on my YouTube channel. Also, there's a blog post over at policyviz.com that, that walks through this in a little bit uh, more detail. So here's the graph. I've turned on all the markers so you can see all the series. So let me just walk through uh, how the formulas here were created. So what I've got here obviously is column A is the years. Column B, these are the data, so these are just raw numbers as you click through. Now in the next three series, I'm going to create the red series, which is going to be the first bar and the last bar. The dark series, which you can see in the graph is going to be like the 1940s, 1960s, 1980s, 2000s. And then the light series will be the, the, the those other decades. So you could of course copy and paste, but you know, it's kind of a little more fun and a little more uh, reproducible if you do it with, with formulas. So here's gonna be the first formula. So you can see at the top here, right here, this is just a simple formula, it's an if statement. So if, and of course, if statements have three arguments, there's the evaluation, what happens if that thing is true, and what happens if that thing is false. So the argument here, the evaluation is, if the year, right, in column A, if that's equal to 1946 or 2016, give me the value, right? Give me uh, in, in B2, give me that value. And if it's not true, just give me an NA. So you can see here when I drag this down, I get a 9.35 in 1946. I get NAs all the way through. That'll become important in a little bit. And then I get 1.19 at the bottom here because that's the other OR. Okay, so that sets up the first series. Second series and the third series are gonna be a little bit different. You see, this is a pretty long formula here, but basically it works in a very similar way. It's an if statement. And here, instead of or, there's gonna be an and statement. And so what I need to do is sort of set up a little bit of a kind of lookup formula because I want to say if this is the 1940s, give me the value. If it's not in the 1940s, give me an NA. If it's in the 1960s, give me the value, right? So what I do here, so I want it to be between uh, 1946 and 2016. Uh, and then I'm just going to use this simple round down formula. So I'm basically going to take the year, I'm going to divide it by 10, and then I'm going to round it down. So that for, say, 1947, I'm going to have 194, uh, right? And so that's going to work. And so remember that this is greater than and, and, and less than, so it's gonna ignore 1946 and 2016. So if I have this round down, if it's in 194, 196, 198, or 200, right, if it's any of those, then give me the value. So I have these two arguments. There's the and formula, so if it's greater than 1946, less than 2016, or it's gonna be one of those decades that I want it to be, and remember here, I'm just using this rounding function. So this is, the rounding here says, Okay, 1947 divided by 10 is 194.7. Round it down, gives me 194. So the 1940s are all gonna be 194, 1960s will all be 196, et cetera, et cetera. And then I can just drag that down and you can see that I get some NAs here. I get the values where I want them. And I just do the opposite here for the light series. It's 195, 197, 199, and 201 for the 2010s. Okay. So that sets up the columns, and by what the NAs do, I'll just make this real quick, is when I actually make the, the column chart here, what it's going to do is it's going to place all those series together, I'll make this bigger so you can sort of see it here, but what happens when uh, I change the overlap to be 100% and the width to be zero, they match up. So now that light series is just the yellow bars in this case. So when I select that, it ignores the ones that are NAs, right? Now when I select the gray in this when at this point when it's gray, it ignores the other ones. So that's the advantage of doing it this way. If I just plotted just this first series here by itself and made that column chart and made it bigger so you can see it and change the series overlap and the width, now they're all the same color. And so to change the decades to the colors I want, I have to do this, I'd have to do this manually, right? I'd have to go in and select that one, and then do that one, and then do this one, and do that one, and it just, it's, it's just gonna take forever. So by using the formula and recognizing that Excel ignores the NAs, I can make that, that column chart. Okay, so that's the first part. 
Second part is all the scatter plots that are used to add the labels. And so I'm going to set this up with just um, some extra placeholders here because when I make this on a PC, once this is in, I can just go to the combo chart. So that's how we set up the chart. All right, so now where do all these data points come from? So this is a question that, that popped up a couple times in some notes uh, and some messages and some DMs from folks. And so I just wanted to answer a few of these real quickly. So first off, the grid lines. So I'm going to label these at 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So that's pretty easy, right? So the X value is 0. The Y values are equal to those points. I'm going to label those, and I'm going to add a, a, a horizontal error bar. So that one's, that one's pretty, I think that one's pretty easy. All right, now what about the rest of these? So let's do the scatters at the bottom. That's this series here. Remember, these are going to be my focal years. And again, I could just type these out. But again, it's a kind of fun to like figure out these answers in 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 um, in Excel. So how do you like get the apostrophe 46? Well, it's a little concatenation. So it's going to be uh, right here. You probably can't see that so clearly, but it's a it's a quotation mark with a single apostrophe and another quotation mark. So that's going to render just the single apostrophe. And then I'm joining it with K9 minus 1900, right? So that's going to be the 46. And down here, I have to change that uh, to 2000. And you can see I've added the little S here uh, at the bottom. So that's how I'm going to get uh, how I get these labels here. Now, uh, the X's and the Y's. So the Y is pretty easy. I just want that to be slightly above zero. So I just picked 0 0.25. Um, and then for the Y's, I am just figuring out where the point is. And again, you can see that I am uh, just uh, using a little bit of a formula. So I want this all from base of 1946. Because remember, the way Excel is going to view a scatter plot is the position of the point. So this 1946 bar... From the perspective of Excel, the X value here is 1. It's not 1946, so it's 1. So I want everything to be based off 1. So you can see here that this is 1946 minus 1. 1950 uh, is going to be 1950 minus 1945. And here I'm adding plus 0.5 because I just, as you can see, I want it to just be over just a little bit so it fits right within there. And what I really did to start this whole thing off was I took the original New York Times graph. I put it in here. I made my full graph, I turned off the fill and just layered on top and just rearranged things so that I could actually just line things up exactly the way I wanted it. Okay, what about the years? So these are going to be the orange dots up here. So again, I'm going to put these exactly where I want them. Notice it's just difference from 1945, so that's the position, so that's the X value. Now the Y value, how did I figure this out? Again, I just literally put my graph on top of the New York Times graph and then adjusted the points for where I, they want, I wanted to put them so that they matched up exactly with the New York Times. So that's how that's done. Now, what about the error bar? So how do I get this vertical error bar going down? So a few things that need to go on here. What I want, let's take this 1968 line. What I want is the difference from this where this 1968 dot's going to be and the top of this bar for 1968. So... In this cell right here, I'm going to take the value, so M22, that's the value for 1968. And then I need to do a little VLOOKUP because I need to go find what the height is of that dot, right? So I want everything linked here. It's just a little bit, you know, easier in terms of reproducing this. So what I'm going to do with this VLOOKUP is I'm going to look up for 1968 uh, over in the, uh, in the data. Whoops, I'm going to have to undo that. I'm going to have to go look that up in the data over here in A to B, right, and look up the value, and I want column two. So that's what that VLOOKUP doing. This VLOOKUP is giving me the value in each of these years. And from uh, I use that as the second part in this formula where I'm subtracting it from the Y value of the dot. So that's how the error bars are constructed. And now we have the last piece, which is the yellow series, the yellow dots which is the labels. And here again, a few things that need to happen. So again, uh, I'm going to set up uh, here. I'm just going to link it back to the uh, set above. So these are just going to be reproduced. The Y values. Um, now here, I'm going to move these around just a little bit because I want these a little bit lower. So these are all just going to be minus 0.5. Um, you know, and again, I'm sort of playing around with, um, with the times thing. So you can see I have some different factors here that I'm subtracting. Um, 
And the last thing really to, to note here is how to get these labels to wrap. So I'm gonna take this text here. You can see that this text is on two lines. So I'm going to put this back on one line. So if I just type this in, I would get it in one line. So what I'm gonna do is just pull this out of this cell for a second. I'll just put it in here. So you can see this, this is one line. If we go back to the original graph, the original times graph, they had a break in the, in the line, a carriage return after the word and. So what I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna go into my formula bar, and after the word and, I'm gonna hold down the option key and hit the carriage return, and that is gonna move that label over like that. So it actually adds a carriage return. So you can see that it shows up here in the formula bar, it's how it's gonna show up over here. In, uh, in in the graph. And let's just do the 1978 one. So you can see it's on three lines. So I'm gonna grab it just so I can demonstrate one more time. I'll just put it over here, delete all these carriage returns. So now it's on one line. And from the New York Times graph, we want it on three lines. So it's gonna go Tennessee uh, is first. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key, hit return. Let's move that over. And then I want seats on the third line, Alt key, hit return. And now I have it on those three lines so that when I put it in the graph, it's gonna follow that. And notice, right, that it doesn't immediately look that way when I have the cell like this, but when I space the cell out so it all fits, I get it exactly the way I want it. So that's how the graph was constructed. You could see it's a bunch of different formulas, none really that compl complicated. It's really a combination of some uh, if and or statements, a round down function, uh, a little concatenation, and then a VLOOKUP. And that's really all you need uh, to, to make this chart. So if you go over to the blog, you can download this file, you can play around with it, and now you could change this, you could really update this for whatever you wanted because now it's all basically updated. So if I change this to 1960, for example, um, that's gonna move over, and of course I'd have to change the spacing and all that stuff, but you can see how it automatically updates just by changing that, that one value. So I hope this is helpful. Check out this YouTube channel for more Excel tutorials. Check out policyviz.com for more step-by-step -step Excel tutorials and so much more to help you improve the way you communicate and visualize your data.